the rim. I don't believe it's a stretch to say that the Celtics and Heat are officially a rivalry. As a matter of fact, it's one that began in 2010 and has spanned through the 2020s so far. While spectating the most recent installment and all the amazing moments that were happening, I stopped to think about all the amazing moments I've experienced with this over the last 13 years. It was my belief that if I were to present them all in one place, you would actually see how great this rivalry has been and the potential for where it can go. So that's what this video entails. I'm going to go down to the very individual plays that make this matchup what it's been so far, some of which you may not even remember. In 2010, the first time these two ever met in the playoffs, ironically played a part in the formation of the Big Three the very next year, given that Boston would beat both LeBron and Wade on their way to their second NBA Finals in three years. This was a lopsided first round, and it was fairly well known that Miami didn't stand any real chance, but there were still some fun moments. Take for instance, this Paul Pierce game winner to grant the Celtics a 3-0 lead. Pierce puts it up for the win! Knocks it down! Celtics win! Yet another clutch shot by the truth may have helped avoid an unnecessarily long series as the very next game, Dwayne Wade would put up a 46 point masterclass to avoid the sweep. That was about it for 2010 though. Wade was the leading scorer in every single game for both teams in the series, and that individual dominance was a sign of things to come. The very next season, the Heat had formed their big three in a near direct response to the Celtics, and we spent all season knowing that at some point they were going to end up in a battle. That brings us to a moment that I feel has largely been forgotten. Pocket four, poked away, and then Wade pulls down Rondo. It was almost like he was trying to box him out. Rondo's shaking up on the play. In the midst of Boston trying to defend their home court down 0-2, Rajon Rondo would suffer one of the more gruesome injuries you'll ever see, only to later somehow emerge from the tunnel and inject life into the crowd with one arm. Of course, reality would set in as the series drug on, leading to LeBron exercising his demons against the green team at long last. Early in the game. Wade. James for the lead. <laughs> Two to play in game five. LeBron's defense on Pierce. Green is coming for Kristic. Rebound by Bonds. He's got 10 rebounds. Like this action. 2 3 with LeBron James and Dwayne Wade. James over Pierce. Tiger. Oh. Give you necessarily oh. for steal. By LeBron James. One devastating turnover for Boston after another. 14-0 run. A team that couldn't close is going to close two consecutive games. That's an offensive foul. Offensive foul on Delonte West just going into the chest of Dwayne Wade. In a game Boston was largely in control of, James would go on to score 10 straight points in two minutes, humiliating and sending home the group that had given him so many problems since he last made the NBA Finals in 07. The old saying goes to act like you've been somewhere before, but neither he nor D. Wade could pretend they hadn't just crossed a major item off their list. This was a rivalry. A rivalry that would resume in 2012 for the third straight year as the Derrick Rose knee injury cleared the path for the Celtics to make it back to the Eastern Conference Finals. Of significant note is that Chris Bosh was hurt in the second round also, meaning it was largely up to Wade and James to take down Boston on their own. With Miami winning Game 1, Rondo would return in Game 2 to explode for 44 points, 10 assists, and 8 rebounds in a game where he knocked down more mid-range jumpers than he probably had the entire season. Although it wasn't enough for that moment, through four games, the series was tied going into game five in Miami. That's where I present you this play. You feel they can just put their head down without any resistance. Oh, what a block from Wade! Kicks out to Petrus for three. That's good. What a turnaround play. This was such an incredible sequence because Boston was already down six, probably ready to fall behind by double digits after the marvelous Wade block. Yet, Rondo redirected it in mid-air to the corner to cut it to a one-possession game, eventually leading to this play. Defense! 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 
Pierce for three. It's good. Paul Pierce from way downtown. And Boston leads by four. You probably know by now there's never been a ton of love between Pierce and LeBron, save for that one time Paul went on a drunken rant on Twitter. Well, it was no different back then, and with that shot, he seemingly just put an end to the Heat's experiment in the face of LeBron. It put the Heat on the brink of extinction, was about to block them from even getting back to the finals after the 2011 meltdown, and nearly pushed LeBron to his third Celtics loss in five years. All of that from this one shot setting up this moment in history. James tries again and puts it in again. Nine for ten from the field. What a performance so far for LeBron James. 45 points, 15 rebounds. Yep, all this time has passed and it's still probably LeBron's greatest game ever. He quite literally saved his entire career with this performance and sent it back to Miami for a game seven where this happened. This time shuts him off. Shot clock down to five. And James fires a three. Yeah! LeBron James from well beyond the arc. And the Heat lead by seven. It got the Mike Breen bang of approval and all. That was his 30th point and essentially the end of the Boston Big Three era. Bad insult, Ray Allen left the Celtics to join Miami over the offseason as Boston had been put to bed for good. Fast forward eight years into the future and the cast for both sides looked quite a bit different but the goal was still the same. Kill the other side, make the NBA Finals. The two would meet in the bubble for the rights to represent the Eastern Conference for the first time since both of their respective Big Three eras. Per usual, the game was dramatic, in overtime, leading to this. Seven, working against Butler, got downhill, couldn't punch it, Bam says get it out of here! Out of bio, sky high with the block and rejection. It really is unfortunate that there wasn't a crowd present to take this one in. That's besides the point though. Bam had blocked Tatum's attempt to tie the game, and eventually the Celtics chance to go back to the finals, putting the all-time playoff series at 3-1 Miami's way. After that weird 2021 year that I reckon will be argued as the actual COVID season one day, the two met up again in 2022 for, you guessed it, an NBA Finals ticket. Honestly, a lot of this series was just a mess, but it still produced as Celtics and Heat often does. For instance, Game 6, where Boston began to seem like they were on their way finally, then Jimmy Butler answered. Picks it out to Butler. Butler, corner three. It's good. Jimmy Butler with his fourth three-pointer of the game. It's back to five. Butler drives, goes inside. It's good. And the foul. Jimmy Butler once again. Which Finds Butler, Butler turns, fires, it's good! As the shot clock expires, Jimmy Butler, and it's a six point lead. 47 points and momentum killers to send this series back to Miami for a seventh game. As many of you know, I was in the building for this one and I'd never been more sure I was watching a Boston collapse in real time. Three right here. Oladipo in traffic, got it. Lowry. Struess to make it a two-point game connect. Flash! Smart. Bakes. Fires. Butler. He can tie. For the lead. Loose and Horford. Gonna have to foul. They do. Butler had a clean look, Jeff. That Jimmy Butler shot still haunts my dreams, and there's never been a time where I watched it and didn't expect it to go in. By all accounts, the shot was supposed to go in, but in some sick twist of fate, the Celtics got away with an obvious sell and celebrated their first trip to the finals since 2010 on their rival's home court. Felt good after 2020, but what came next did not. Miami winning one game was whatever, but then Grant Williams decided to talk to Jimmy Butler. The grind, the gyration, and the two in the foul. And they're having words. Look, oh, at, look this. at that. No, oh, yeah. Eye to eye. <laughs> by Brown and here's the shot made by Williams and look at the words already we'll take it into the defense of Grant Williams shot clock at four here he accelerates and finds two oh, and gave him the, the two small sign to three Butler drives on Grant Williams and a 15 footer will tie it at 100 this is what he wants. inside for the lead he got it. that's what he wants Grant Williams on him
The Celtics are going to have to come and double. People are going to think it's over, but Boston's been a lot better on the road than they have at home. And remember last year's Eastern Conference Finals, the road team won five out of seven. Losing both home games as the higher seed team is always a no-no and will almost always result in your elimination. Doing so while getting dogged out by the team's best player who you chose to rile up is just emasculating. And once game 3 unfolded, I felt the Celtics breaking as a franchise. Jimmy Butler even did Al Horford's timeout taunt back to him while they were getting obliterated. Down 0-3, no momentum, and on the brink of falling to the Heat for the fourth time in seven matchups. They won one game, okay cool, that's expected. They won a second, and okay that was sort of expected too, especially after the don't let us get one comment. There was just zero chance they were gonna get a third though. I will say at this point, Game 6 2023 is one of the greatest games I've ever watched. There are too many moments to pull from here. Duncan Robinson even did Jimmy Butler's exact pose on the three he missed the previous year on a three that would have likely broken things open here. In any case, Butler ended the game on three free throws, which I felt was poetic given that he missed that three to win the series before. It all just felt like the Heat were supposed to get it back right here. It's off the smoke for the seventh game. Sounded, the light was on, it'll be reviewed. You have to protect the offensive rebound. Oh, he got All rid of it. He That's sure a did. Celtic and win, and we're going to, to game seven. The Celtics are going to win. There's a game seven back in Boston. Like I said, one of the greatest and most improbable games I've ever watched in my entire life. The Boston Celtics were now poised to become the only team in NBA history to come back from an 0-3 playoff series deficit. They were now only the fourth team ever to force a Game 7 after going down that far. Exactly the type of drama you'd expect from the Miami Heat and Boston Celtics, as for the last decade, you've really gotten nothing different. Although the men in green did not prevail, at this specific moment, it would appear the story continues. Boston finally made a major shakeup to their core, adding Kristaps Porzingis, who is unironically the player they probably needed to beat the Heat zone in this year's playoffs. A Jalen Brown extension appears to be looming, and there's currently no reason to believe they won't be right back contending next season. Since the inception of the Brown and Tatum duo, they've been to the Conference Finals, Second Round, Conference Finals, Injured Out in the First Round, the NBA Finals, and the Conference Finals. Meanwhile, the Miami Heat are taking longer than expected, but it appears sooner or later they'll draw Damian Lillard, at long last making an actual change to this roster that's been trying to bring home the gold for four seasons now. Of course, the NBA is as unpredictable as ever and maybe these two cores will never face off again, who knows. But from where we're sitting, I expect more hotly contested battles and history defining moments that we've been spoon fed since the start of last decade. It's 4-2 at the moment and all we can do for now is hope that the rivalry continues.